I don't think I've ever heard this term in my entire life, but it's something that came up when I was uh, writing a chapter of my book this morning, and that was emotional celibacy. Now, most of us probably know what celibacy is, right, in the traditional sense, the physical aspect of celibacy. If you don't know what that is, go look it up, right, or go ask your parents or go ask an adult, right? But if you're an adult, you probably know what celibacy means, and so... I started thinking about, you know, obviously the ramifications of intentional celibacy. When you get into a state of celibacy on purpose, it can be a powerfully transformative experience for you, right? I've been through those stages and those states myself where I was intentionally just looking to purify the vessel in essence. And it did change, you know, in some cases, let's say if I was in a relationship, it changed the relationship dynamic. And we got to see what was truly holding the relationship together. Outside a relationship, it just showed me who I am outside of that primal desire that, you know, I have as a man, right? Or just as a human being. But what I started to really get into this morning was about emotional celibacy and how many of us might, or many of us, the ones who do get into a state of celibacy and make that decision physically, What we oftentimes forget is that there is a heavy emotional side. As a matter of fact, I believe the emotional side is just as important, if not more so important. Because if we are not emotionally celibate at the same time, and we're just taking upon us any type of energies, we're just taking any type of anybody into our life experience, then it's going to be like we did nothing in the first place, right? If we are hanging out with the very same energies that we were with before, we might be engaging with them differently, but we're still absorbing those energies nonetheless. We're still bringing those type of individuals and their type of temperaments and their type of, um, basically whatever they're carrying, we will begin to carry. Let me just put it in that sense, right? Let me just put it in, in, in layman's terms, as they say, straight up and down. And what I started to realize for myself is, again, I might have gotten myself into these into these places of, okay, I'm going to be, you know, celibate for this amount of time and I'm going to purify my vessel, etc. But yet I was, let's say, listening to the very same content or listening to the very same people, align the very same people into my inner circle. And so the experiences that I had were were tapered, right? The power that that could have had for me to transform my life never really kicked in full gear. I wasn't truly being... I guess, aligned mind, body, soul. I wasn't being completely integrated. Yes, the body stuff or the bodily aspect or the fleshly aspect of it. Sure, that was taken care of. But what about my soul? What about who I am? The the very core and essence of who I am. What about my temperaments, my moods, my attitudes, my literal emotional states? What difference does it make if I stop drinking and smoking and sleeping around if I still have envy in my heart, if I still have judgment in my heart, if I still have bitterness and resentment in my heart? What difference does it make if I think I'm purifying myself, if I'm not really getting deep with myself? Emotional celibacy. That is the practice of abstaining from those emotional patterns that I've been so used to, those destructive emotional patterns. And by the way, I'm not calling the emotions themselves negative, right? Let's just get down to that. I believe, actually, I know this to be true, is that our emotions are indicators, whether negative or positive. Our emotions are indicating whatever is going on under the hood of this car that we call our life, right? Same as a check engine light or check your tire light, whatever it may be. It's just saying, hey, I want you to check this out. There's something going on internally, And we need you to see it immediately. That's all that's about. So I'm not necessarily labeling the emotions as negative, right? All I'm saying is they are the byproduct of something that we're holding on to. So again, if I'm holding on to resentment towards somebody or even towards myself, then I am essentially tainted and I need purification from that. And the purification I'm talking about is not by doing, you know, 30 Hail Marys, etc. It's by making a conscious and intentional decision to let go of that resentment. How about that? I know. Sounds crazy. Sounds, sounds damn near impossible 
for many of us, especially in this day and age where, you know, you're so uh, saturated and bombarded with all these messages of never forgive. If they did this to you, this narcissist, this, that, and this, that, and the third, and that, like, trust me, I get it. Trust me. I get it. Absolutely. 1000%. You feel justified in your non-forgiveness, but I promise you this. If you hold on to it, yet yeah, you're saying, oh, I'm celibate. Oh, I'm cold turkey. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. But you're still holding on to that. You're going to be just as as bad. You're going to be just as worse off as you would be if you had not. You might as well just go back into the streets and just run the streets at this point because it would make no difference. I'm telling you right now that aspects that truly taint are within. And I promise you, if you made a vow to yourself to be emotionally celibate, it would actually make the physical celibacy so much easier. You'll be able to step into those spaces with absolute ease for myself. At this moment in time, I'm just strictly focused on what I'm focused on, building out the vision of my life, right? Purifying the vessel. And it became so easy because my inner work matters most. So I'm already not in this place where I'm so needy and desperate and I need the validation. You know, I need a woman laying next to me to get validation. I'm no longer in that space. I'm not in that head frame. And I'm not saying, oh, I no longer have, you know, those desires. Trust me, my T levels are high, real, real high. If you see the way I eat, I eat I eat the type of food that gets your T levels high, high, right? That's just how I live. I got more energy than I know what to do with on a daily basis. But still, I have a conscious awareness and I have an intentional practice that allows me to see why exactly is it that you have that desire to, you know, to lay up. Why do you have a desire to run the streets right now? Why do you have a desire to be hitting these people up all the time, right? Which is a whole nother one, by the way. I could make an entire different video just about this one. If y'all if y'all demand this one, I will make sure to do so. And that is when you find yourself in a place where you are celibate, you are in your season of quote unquote singleness, possibly, but you're still texting a hundred people and you're still engaging with and entertaining it. Like that's a whole nother. As a matter of fact, no, I'm going to do that one. Scratch it. I'm going to do it. I decided to. We're going to talk about, you know, your season of singleness is a lie. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make that one happen for y'all. But yeah, you find yourself in a place where you are, you're trying to do the right thing. I get that. Your intentions are right. Your intentions are pure. I absolutely 1000% get it. But we have to understand, realize, understand, overstand that it is absolutely essential for us to completely and absolutely check ourselves before we rickety rickety. No, we need to check ourselves and see the condition of our heart. We need to check ourselves and see the condition of what our emotions are indicating to us. What are emotions telling us? Like right now, what are my emotions telling me? Well, right now, to be honest with you, I'm in flow, right? I'm feeling good. I, I, I literally, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of spaced out, but zoned in, right? I feel good. And so this is an indicator that I'm doing something that is responding well with me. I'm, I'm feeling good about myself. There's a higher level of self-esteem happening in this moment, right? But if I start to feel angst, if I start to feel tension, I might be thinking about, well, what's going on? And oh, well, I think um, I'm not really being completely transparent and honest in this video, or uh, I feel like I'm going to be judged on the other side of this, right? Again, I really have to just start introspecting and nobody can do that introspection for you. You're the only one who can do that work, period. I don't even know what this phone is at. Let me see. Oh, shout out to my brother, though. He's always got some gas that he's sending me. See? Yup. There we go. He sent a song called Win, W. Always got some good. See? That's the type of energy right there. That's what happens when you start being emotionally celibate. You start getting energy towards you all the time. You become inundated with that type of energy. And I've made a few messages where... It just had to come out of me at that moment. But it's like some of y'all, y'all just holding on to these, these relationships that must have sailed a whole long time ago, right? There, you, you, didn't hold, you didn't held them down with an anchor. Like that's the only reason this relationship has not sailed. And it's time for you to let go of those in order for you to truly step into this place of purification. When I'm talking about purification, by the way, I'm not talking about, you know, your holiest and holier than thou. I said, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm not talking about the religiosity. I'm not talking about the dogma and the doctrine. That's not what I am referring to. I am referring to you tapping in with your most authentic, truest self, period. That's what that's about. Who are you actually? Why are you here? And are you living in accordance with that purpose? Is everything in your life resonant of that purpose that you have been placed upon this earth to fulfill? 
Is that what you're doing? Or are you just doing some extra stuff? Are you just being avoidant? Are you just uh, continuing to find yourself in, in different circles and spaces and areas, things that don't even make sense in the first place, let alone make sense for why you are here? Like you're supposed to be out, you know, in nature camps and in hikes and with the kids, and but you're over at the club and you don't even feel right at the club. Like you're just there because you're there. You got this outfit on that you don't even want to have on. Like you want some comfy pants. You want the shorts, you know. You want the hiker, the hiker boots on, but you got on the high heels and you can't even walk. You're walking clunky in them. Like come on, let's be real. You got the Louis belt, the Versace, but you, you don't even like belts like that. You got the Cartier frames, but you don't even wear shades like that. They're not even prescription, though. You understand me? So you find yourself in places and spaces that you don't belong. Shout out to my own girl, Carrie Nicole. You find yourself in places and spaces that you do not belong. And then you wonder why your life is turning out the way that it is. It's because you are in the wrong place, buddy. You are not where you're supposed to be, period. Wrong entrance. As my brother would say, try again. Try again. Try again. So, that being said, for I dip skedaddle, I want to plug this in. A guilt-free plug, actually. Shout out to my first published book, Doing Me Guilt-Free. Make sure to get yourself a copy of one of these. Now, the story behind this is, uh, two years old, my pops asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the two-year-old me somehow came up with the answer, I want to be an author. And so, 25 years later, here it is. We got a published book. So shout out to that. Make sure to get yourself a copy of one of these. Everything that you get from me is all in here times 100. I'm telling y'all, that thing right there is gas. Like, absolutely. I'm speaking right to you and to me. Actually, I wrote it for me. It really was all written for me at first. And I said, you know what? I guess I could share this with the people as well because it's time we got over this whole thing of living our life in the shadows. We can't do that no more. Nah, not in 2023 or any time beyond that. Whenever you get this in the time capsule, right now is not the time to be hiding in corners and dimming lights all the way down. This ain't the time. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Namaste. Namaste.